Oh man, what a day, what a day, what a day, what a day. <sighs> yeah, this is literally my third time trying to record this, this, not this vlog, because as y'all could tell, we're not in a gym, we have a mic, we have a headset, So it must mean this is therapy podcast is back. <laughs> so yeah, um, this is literally my third time trying to. I don't know. Let me just make sure everything's going. Cause <laughs> okay, you're going good. We're recording. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. Whenever I tell you this is literally my third time trying to record this podcast. The first time the camera died. The second time um, I didn't click record on the mic thing. So I was just talking to that. So now we're here. And honestly, kind of all this kind of plays into why we're here, to be honest. As y'all know, it's been almost a year since I had a podcast and it's been a crazy year, to be honest. It's been a very big uh, personality development, mental growth year because there's a lot of stuff happened that I haven't been able to share. Honestly, even my whole content world that I've usually put up that I was working on for like the last while, well, still in Denton, really went downhill just because life happened and a massive shift happened and I wasn't ready at all and it was just like hey yo and so yeah we're here um I guess this is the official 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 welcome back to this is therapy let's go Oh, bro, I love that. Oh, man. Who would have known I'm miss saying that? Welcome back to This Is Therapy Podcast. Thank you for coming. I'm your host, Samuel Belisa. We are in my bedroom. For those that are, um, this is your first time watching, thank you for watching. For those that are veterans, you are probably like, hey, bro, where, where, where's the blue couch? Where's the gray couch? Where's the um tall bar desk table shit? Yeah, I know. Y'all OGs. If you've been here for a while, you understand that. If you've been here a while, you probably know why I haven't been posting. Because you're probably close to me outside. But yeah, really, um, life just happened. Um, There's no better place to start than where it started. Which was kind of like around end of July, August-ish. End of July, early August. It was the last time I made a vlog. And was honestly... This is the last time. Nah, I mean, I posted a few um, workout videos here and there. No, this is the last time I made a podcast, but I've made a few vlogs here and there. But yeah, <sighs> life just took a swirl on me. Um, I really never planned to move back home. <laughs> Excuse me, sorry. Really never planned to move back home just because I loved the living alone. It was fun. I'm not gonna lie. Even though I didn't live alone, I had three roommates, but it was just like, I feel like everyone, everyone should move out and then move back home to save money. But you should like experience living on your own for a little bit, figure out what you don't like, figure out what you do like. It's kind of like dating, you know, leave your parents' house, go date up different apartments, figure out what you like, don't like, then come back. And I've come back, not really saving money because I'm in disgusting amount of debt. I don't want to talk about that, but we'll talk about it later. But yeah, so um, end of July, um, yeah, end of July, early August, I stopped recording a lot because I was moving back home from then I graduate college, and I'm moving back home. Um, uh, from August to October, didn't really do a lot of content just because I didn't have a car. And so it was like, obviously, it was harder for me to get around to do, like, workout vlogs just because I didn't have a car. And then, two, it was hard for me to make podcasts because most of the people that I did know and made videos with lived in Denton. Huh? Okay, I'm just trying to make sure. 
looks good on the camera. But yeah, most of the people I did vlogs and um, podcasts with lived in Denton. And I live a good 45 minutes to an hour away from Denton, which isn't terrible, but it's like not a lot of people are going to want to make that drive. And I couldn't make time in my schedule. Not just because that's just the drive alone is about an hour and a half there and back. But then setting up the podcast, picking the location, this, that, and the third. It was just too much. And I also, while I didn't have a car, I was still trying to look for a job. So it was just like a little too much all at once. So I was just like, you know what? This is going to have to take a back seat, and which I did put in the back seat. But then eventually I got a car. But then... Once I got a car, my career kind of went downhill. This is October frame. We got a car around October-ish. And what happened? Oh, yeah. I got a car. Got a job. Job was pretty um, time-consuming because it was a sales job. I was a recruiter for a little bit, like a month or two, two months max, two, three months type shit. Didn't really like that career. The base salary was pretty low, and the commission was, it sounded like lazy, but it was just like, they made it sound easier than what it really was. Anyone that's ever had a terrible corporate experience, you understand, like, it's easy to lie to people that don't know what to really look for. And so, yeah, I took the job, was in it for like a few months, I was just like, yeah, this is not what I signed up for. I met a bunch of cool people, but it was just like, this is not what I signed up for, or what I was expecting. So, left that. Like, kind of early November, maybe late October, went into serving again, food industry. And from there, from November, that's really where life started to take a toll. And that's when I realized, I was like, fuck, I'm not making content like I like to. I'm not in therapy I'm not reading, I'm not writing, I'm literally just kind of lost, I'm a typical 20 year old, kind of sucks because I'm just older than most people that graduate college, I'm 24, I had to think about it because everyone says I'm 25, all my friends say I'm 25, so it messed with my head, I'm not 25, I'm 24, I do turn 25 this year though, I graduated college, I was 23 I think, some shit like that, but yeah. So, pretty much, it was just super crazy because, like, I wasn't doing anything I like. I really didn't like my serving job like I usually do. And it was just like, damn, bro, like, what do you want to do? And I really couldn't tell you. So, from, like, November to February, this is the time period we're going to be talking about right now. November to February. November 2022, February 2023. Um... Everything that could have gone wrong went wrong. I feel like, I, like I said, I wasn't making content. I wasn't writing like I usually do. My mental health was kind of going down. And my spiritual life was... I didn't have a spiritual life at that time, to be honest. Yeah, I kind of did. Iffy. I was like, dip it up. And I went to a couple... Um, shout out to Infusion. I went to a couple of their young adult stuff. But, like, that was, like, once a month, if that, maybe once every other month. So, yeah, my spiritual life was pretty boo-boo. My relationship at the time was boo-boo. We were arguing a lot. And so, like, all of that just led to a mean mudslide of emotions that did not help me still. Um, Basically, damn, bro, I feel like I'm on, like, 2020. Like, I'm just being vulnerable as fuck right now like i'm just pouring everything out this is like some of my friends are friendly to watch it to be like oh my god sam why did you reach out i'm like yeah shut up <clears throat> i don't reach out that's gay sorry that's supposed to say that that's a lame don't get don't cancel me please but yeah um from there like it was just really bad um obviously moving back home wasn't the plan and no one plans to move back home everyone plans to graduate college get a Six-figure job right after college and live in a Dallas skyline or move to New York or whatever. So, yeah. Um, so, to move back home, it was like a punch in to the ego. I was just like, damn, what the fuck am I supposed to do? I'm going to cuss a lot. I'm a cusser. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Um, but I was just like, yeah, what am I supposed to do? Like, I really didn't know what I wanted to do. Um, I wanted to go to law school, but I was just like, yeah, that'd be nice if I could go to law school without collecting debt, 
So I was like, oh, be a paralegal. And I'm like, I think a lot of what I was thinking at that moment was just short term, short term. And I was just like, I just need something to boost me right now. I need something to get me started right now. I'm going to, I think I need to bring the mic closer. I need something to get me started right now. And everything I was doing was, or everything I kind of thought of, I also thought about doing um, project management for a little bit. I don't know if y'all know this, but Google has this certificate online course thing. You could do is like project management, data analytics, and some, uh, like three other ones. Look it up, Google cert, um, certificate, something like that. If you kind of don't know what to do with your major and you need something to spice up your resume, you should really try it out. It's pretty awesome. I didn't do it because I'm a dickhead, and I don't think it was in the plan, in God's plan for me. Jesus, sorry. I just ate. But yeah, so I just didn't do it, and from there, it was just, my career life was boo-boo. Mental health boo-boo, vlogs were boo-boo, everything was boo-boo, my relationship was boo-boo. Mainly because of me, I wasn't pouring into myself, so it's obviously... If I have nothing in myself, how am I going to pour into someone else, which um, ruined our relationship. And kind of fast forward, uh, February 19th, yeah, February 19th, 2023, like 730, uh, my ex made the smart decision to break up. I say smart decision because because of her breaking up, we both, I mean, I, don't know, I think she's doing that. I'm pretty sure she's doing good um so that decision honestly kind of like woke me up and it was just kind of like for some reason i'm not saying she was holding me down but life just kind of got better i don't want to like it's so weird but like i've like i i truly have this belief that i'm extremely hard-headed um that's not belief that's just common sense but I'm extremely hard-headed, and one way I feel like God talks to me is through women, because he knows I'll listen to girls I'm dating. Literally, for my first girlfriend, she's the only reason I started looking into colleges, because she told me, let's go on a college visit or tour our campus. From there, I started applying to more colleges, put it on, like, oh, I'm on track, blah, blah, blah. I went on a couple visits, and then my second girlfriend, she was the first person, or she's not the first person, but she kind of made me think about law school a little bit more, what I want to do with that. I w- at that time, I wasn't even thinking about my LSAT, and I was a sophomore. So she kind of, like, woke me up. I was like, oh, man, I probably should start looking into that. And then this last one, she kind of woke me up into my faith, I would say. And so, yeah, that's when my faith journey started going. It's really funny because that Sunday she broke up with me. I went to church. And then we hanged out afterwards. And she broke up with me. And I just remember thinking, I'm like, God, <laughs> you're funny because I haven't gone to church in like maybe like in a minute. I haven't gone to church in a minute. And when I go, you tell her to break up with me. Like, what? But yeah, so uh, it was very hard. Obviously, any type of breakup that you actually like the person is always going to be hard. Especially someone like me, uh, I have numerous of things start like messed up in my head. So like, I feel like I just any like emotion I feel it ten times more than a regular person. So if I see like Spider Man, literally will cry every single time Mary Jane dies. <sighs> Come on, bro, who would it? But yeah, so whenever that happened, uh, I remember like a week or two later, I'm in church. Preacher was preaching. I was just in my feelings. I literally just felt something like just because the preacher was like up there. And it was like, if you need someone to pray over you, just come up here. And I was just like, I'm I'm really shy. That's why I'm not really making eye contact because even though it's a camera and not a human, I'm so shy because I'm like mentally I know someone's going to be looking at their laptop looking at me, which makes me shy. And so I'm just like, I'm looking at something else so yeah it's pretty stupid but i'm shy as hell but yeah so like i so usually when people on um, preachers are like come up here let me pray over you i'm like mm. but this time i don't know what it was i was just super like i just needed to i had something just told me to go up there 
as I was walking up, I would just start tearing up. And I'm not talking about like, thank you, God. I'm just not. Like, you just ate, like, the hottest pepper type of thing. And, like, you, you, you just uncontrollably, like, Kim Kardashian crying, but worse. And I always hate crying in public because I just hate crying in public. I don't mind crying. I think guys should cry. But personally, I hate crying in public. I'll cry by myself in my room and then go to sleep. But public crying is just lame to me. But, yeah, I cried in public. Which was also kind of awkwardly a good feeling. Because it was just like, I thought like I was going to get embarrassed. But like, it was very comforting to have people around me while I was crying. Which was weird. But from there, uh, a few weeks later, the pastor of that church, who's also my best friend, Chica. She was in a previous podcast with me. Uh, the motivation to be good was higher than the pain that I was feeling, I guess. And the, so I just That's a quote Is it? You should put that on the shirt uh, He was like I want to mentor you And I like, um, God's calling me To mentor you And I was like Hey I mean Usually my walk with faith Has always been sketchy Just because I've been scared Of the church Growing up in a, um African church <sighs> If you're African enough You're not African, just kind of think of a black black Baptist church. And if you've never been to a black Baptist church, just think of like cliques, like high school cliques of popular people. That's how church was for me. And I was like, I didn't fit in. And since I didn't fit in, it was just super uncomfortable and like stressful to go to church. I was just like, why, do I, why am I failing like this? Why am I forcing myself to go somewhere that's supposed to help me? But I feel terrible. So I just stopped going for a long time. And I ran away from God. And so whenever this guy comes up to me, the pastor, he's not just a regular pastor. One, he's a black male. I'm black male, if you couldn't tell. He's Igbo, which is a tribe in Nigeria. And so I'm just like, it literally just seeing him, it literally like, brought the eight-year-old me out that didn't like going to church. Huh. Sorry, I thought I heard something. But yeah, it just brought like the eight-year-old me that didn't like going to church. So it was just like, if I already knew how, he, in my mind, I'm like, I already know how this is going to be. Who's just going to judge me? I'm going to feel bad. I don't want to do that. So I was like, no, nah, you... But I didn't say no because I don't say no to adults. But I was just like, yeah, um, uh, well, I could think about it. And he was like, yeah, just think about it. Get back to me if you want to do it. And the fact that he gave me a choice and was like forcing me kind of made me want to do it because, once again, I don't feel like Africans give kids choices. So, like, the fact that he just gave me a choice to if I wanted to do it or not, I was just like, you know what? And I was also think I was like, bro, you're always trying to get closer to God. But every time you try to get close, you fall. And I was like, do you think you're falling because you don't have anyone to pick you up, anyone to guide you? And I'm like, who's better than a pastor? And at this time, I am back in therapy. I got back to therapy like January 1st. It was like one of my New Year's resolutions. So I have my therapist once a week. And then I also have this mentorship with a man that's essentially who I am, a Igbo man in America. That's black. He's light skinned, but same difference. Uh, so yeah, it was extremely. It was a comforting feeling to be able to talk to someone, not just about being black in America, but being Igbo, and like just such a cultural depth that a lot of black Americans will understand. And my therapist was a white lady. Love her to death. I don't care what y'all say. Coolest lady ever. God bless her heart. So, yeah, um, so to be able to, like, even though I love my therapist, I love what, the work we're doing together, it was such an amazing feeling to be able to go to a black man. And I do have my dad in my life. I feel like I should say that because I am black. So people are like, oh, you probably don't call his daddy. No, my dad's my best friend. He was my first friend, actually, to be direct. But, yeah, I mean, even at that, he's still my dad. And there's certain things I want to say to my dad that I can say to, like, a therapist. 
or like a stranger, a mentor type of thing. So it's super cool to be able to talk to someone without feeling judged or feeling judged the right way because you should judge people. Some of y'all need to be judged and need to be told you're a dickhead. I'm sorry, but you are a dickhead. But yeah, um, obviously the pastor didn't call me a dickhead, but he just pulled up Bible verses and I just felt like a dickhead. So it was very good to uh, talk to someone like that. And as I'm talking to him and it's just like, I'm just like, what, what, what have I been doing? These last, this last few months, this last couple of years, like I'm talking to him. I'm just like, what? Three things hit me while I talk to him. One, our faith base. One, why are you blaming God? And it's just it's so funny because everything. It's so it's kind of annoying because I used to make fun of like super Christian people that like just love God. And I was just like, bro, those people are weird. And now I feel like I'm one of those weirdos because everything that, like, I look at my relationship, my ex-relationship, and I'm like, everything that was broken, every time I read the Bible or something, I'm just like, the second you give your life to God, all that all that could have been fixed, buddy. And it was just like, one was, um, I kept on blaming people, or I kept on blaming God for things that people did to me. Like, what people in the church did to me. And that was kind of the same thing with my ex. Like, past relationships, I was blaming her for it. Not literally blaming her, but I had trust issues from past relationships. And it was just like, why would you blame you? Oh, why would you blame your girlfriend for something that ex did? Why would you blame God for pe- something people did? So, it was like, that was one thing. I was like, okay. Second thing is, he went, oh, we were talking about bat- getting baptized. And I was just like, ah, nah, dude, like, I I fucked up a lot. You know, I've done a lot of things that, like, I don't, I don't deserve forgiveness. And I'm like, I don't, I don't deserve his love. I, I'm kind of church still. But it's like, uh, I'm not good enough for, to get baptized. And he was like, you, you do know that's the, that's the whole point of getting baptized. <laughs> is you're never going to be good enough. You're... You coming as who you are is the reason that God loves you. He loves you, not your money, not your clothes, not your six you six foot or five a. He doesn't he doesn't care about that. He wants your heart. If you give him your heart, he really don't. He does care what you do. I'm not gonna say that, but he doesn't care what you did, but he does care what you do. Mm. Yeah, so, and that um, correlated to relationships, because I was just like, I've never felt, not as validated, I never felt enough, I don't know, I know what what I'm trying to think to say, I never felt like I was good enough for a relationship, I always felt like I had to do something, like I never thought that just me was enough to sustain a relationship, I thought I had to either bite or love, do things, Ah, I just had to be there, and it got to the point that, like, I was stressing myself out, because I'm doing all these things, and they'd be like, thank you, but, like, you're doing all these things, but you're not even here, so it's like, and then I'll be like, you don't, you don't care about me, I'm doing all these things for you, and I appreciate it, and it's like, they're appreciative of all the things, but at the end of the day, you're doing all these things, but you aren't there, and God's like, you're coming to church every day or every Sunday. You're reading your Bible, but you still haven't gave your heart to me. So what is all this for? And it was just like, dang, God, why are you so good? And what was the third thing that made me realize? Faith, walk by faith, not by sight. Um, I've always said I believe in, I will believe in God whenever he like kind of proves it to me. And like I saw my pastor, I told my pastor this too. And he was like, he'd pull up Bible verses after Bible verses after Bible verses, showing, like, proving, like, eyewitness and stuff. I'm just like, yeah, but that could have been made up. Like, that was a event a thousand years ago, blah, 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 blah. And kind of just got to a point. He didn't, we, I didn't make this realization with him. I was, like, fasting these fa- all last two weeks because I got baptized yesterday. But I was fasting these last two weeks, and I was thinking, I was just reading something, and I was just like, God, please just show me that you're real. 
and I just kind of heard this like thought. I don't think it was him. I think it was just I mean, it might have been him, but I don't know. But um, I just heard this voice or like this thought process is like, you're never gonna believe he's real if you don't believe. Because I've shown you a million things and you still don't believe. So what what can I do to show you? If I come in front of you, you're just gonna say, "Oh, that was the sunlight glaring on my windshield," because I was in my car whenever this was happening. So it was just like, and then once I thought about that, it brought me to my relationship and with my trust issues. And it was like, I never really believed that she was loyal just because I already had the mindset she wasn't loyal. So it was like, what can someone really prove to you if you already don't believe in them? You never gave them the benefit of the doubt. You never gave them a chance. So if you can't give them a chance and you're just going to see what you want to see. And I chose to see distrust and loyalty um cheating blah 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 within my relationship and then within god i chose not to see any miracles anything good that happened i was like oh that was luck or that was this or good karma but it was just like bro like i'm doing it you just gotta choose to see it so from there on i was just like sorry excuse me but yeah, from there on, it was just kind of clicked to me. I'm like, bro, walk by faith, not by sight, which is terrifying, and which is kind of why I'm here, uh, walking by faith, not by sight. Uh, so the job I did get, I had a second job, kind of going to move back a little, back to February. That was all that just happened pretty recently, the walking by faith, not by sight. It's like within the last week. But moving back to February one more time, and then we're going to be able to move forward from here. Going back to February, I got a health insurance job, which was good. I felt like it was the right step. You know, I, like, I'm, I'm thinking deep, bro. I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm going to be here for like one to two years. I'm going to become a leader, blah, blah, blah. I'm going to make a lot of money, this, that, and the third. And I knew it was going to be a rough start, but like, I, I hit the ground running. I was ready for it. And what ended up happening was I've just been surviving. Anyone that knows anything about I'm an independent health insurance agent. So essentially I'm uh, self-employed. Anyone that knows anything about like starting their own business or anything like that. The first few months you are literally just making barely enough to pay for your bills. And then every single penny basically goes back into your business. So that was what was happening I was pretty much everything was going back into my business. And one day, like, I was just working. I'm just, like, thinking, why are you, um, why are you, what did I say? Surviving? Yeah, I said, why are you choosing to barely survive when God wants you to thrive? And I was just like, okay, how does he want me to thrive, though? And then the thought left. I, I never thought about it. That was like, I was kind of late March, early April, and then let's fast forward a lot. I I had that one thought, um, why are you choosing to survive when God wants you to thrive? And I was I honestly was just surviving. Like whenever I tell you for the last week, I that's the last week for the last three months, I literally lived off of chicken nuggets and Arby's, um, frozen French fries for dinner, and then for lunch, uh, what did I eat for lunch? Um, pre-made, like, minute-made rice, the ones you could get at Walmart and shit, and roast chicken. That's literally what I've been eating for the last three months. Check my vlogs. I don't, I don't cap. So, yeah, and I was literally, and in my mind, I'm like, oh, this is the grind. This is what's supposed to happen. You know, you're just grinding, bro. You don't deserve food. You, like, when you're in the grind, you just have to work. That's what I was thinking, so I didn't think much of it. But then, like, a week ago, uh, one of my friends, Gemma, who is honestly a very, uh, this is going to be annoying. I hope she doesn't watch this. But she's a leader. I see her as a leader, and she honestly guides me. And I go to her a lot for uh, spiritual questions. Um, I went to her baptism last week, uh, and I met her coach. She's a boxer, so I met her boxing coach. And he was just like, I told him my situation, 
And he was just like, well, why won't you make content? I was like, oh, yeah, well, I mean, I need something to pay the bills. And he was like, okay. And then I was hiring for $20 an hour. He was like, go be a cook at night and just make content during the day. And I was just like, oh, man, it's easier said than done. You don't know anything about me, blah, blah, blah. And it really came down. Like, once he said that, it just kind of clicked. I'm just like, well, why not? Sam? Why Why is it not that easy? And so, yeah, like, now, I like, that happened about a week ago. And I swear, for the last week, every single day, I wake up and ask God, what do you want me to do? I still feel like I don't hear him. I feel like there's so many noises. I'm so I'm so baby Christian. I just got baptized yesterday, and I've been going to church pretty religiously for the last three four months. So I'm I'm, I'm an infant, and I'm just I just hear a bunch of noises, but I don't know what is what. Every once in a while, I'm I'm able to tell which one's my dad's voice, which one's my mom's voice, but for the most part, it's just a blurry mess of noises. And so I just something just said walk by faith, not by sight, and so I was just like. Fuck it. I think I'm just going to quit my job and go back to being a server and fully focus on content. And that is where we are. Present day Samuel Colisa. I haven't quit my job yet. I'm going to go quit tomorrow. Which is terrifying because being African, I like. I don't think my parents do put this um, pressure on us. A little bit they do. Just a little bit. But for the most part, they, I feel like they got to the point where like, just be happy with everything that's going on in the world with kids killing themselves every single day, kids killing other kids, people going to, I live in Texas, so there's a lot of shootings, blah, 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 and just shootings in America, period. But yeah, it's, it's, I feel like they've gotten to the point where they're just like, yeah, I don't care what you do, just be happy and make a good living for yourself. And so to tell them, like, hey, yeah, so I'm going to quit my job to go back to being a server, even though I have a degree. But what I think my calling is, is to pick up a camera and talk to it. So, yeah, remember, I'm Nigerian. Anyone that, it doesn't matter I'm Nigerian. Anyone that has any foreign parents or anyone that knows friends of foreign parents, you know what I'm doing is, like, uncharted territory right now and i don't know i'm scared um if you can't do something bravely do it scary so that's what i'm doing um i'm just hoping that what i'm doing is the right decision i'm hoping that this is actually god talking to me telling me to go into content and honestly i don't even know what to expect from it Obviously, everyone going into content creators and whatever wants to be number one. But what if that's not my purpose? What if my purpose is to be number 500, but I motivate someone because they watch one of my videos and they become number one and they help a million people. And all I ever do in life is have maybe a thousand subscribers and I'm still a, no, I'm not going to be a server. I can promise you that. But I'm probably like a restaurant manager. Because I never got back into corporate America. I think I'll be happy with that. You know, as long as I get to make content, have a decent money. And for me, I'm pretty chill. So, literally, my desk is my old bear pong table. So, that should tell you I'm not really a spending money type of person. So, like... Honestly, if I could get a job that pays me 75k a year, I'm pretty straight for life. I'm not going to lie to you. So, yeah. I don't know. I don't really know what to do. Um, I want to make this video really to tell people I'm back. <laughs> we we finna get turned on. This is Therapy Podcast. Um, yeah. <sighs> oh, yeah. So... I know I've been making a lot of vlogs on Instagram. I'm trying to get still get consistent. I'm trying to get some workout videos up in there. But yeah, we are going to. Oh my god! Okay, I got scared. <laughs> well, but yeah, we're gonna take it over. Oh, we're gonna come back. Oh my god! So, I'm editing the video, and I realized 
literally i looked at it maybe like two minutes tops i looked at my recorder and was like oh wait is it still going and i was like oh yeah it's still going i was making sure this mic was going um but yeah i was just like oh wait is it still going and it was still going but then the storage got full like two minutes after but pretty much the end of the podcast either way to be honest i did i thought it was I swear to god oh sorry on go no you can't even say that but pretty much what i want to say is I honestly thought I wasn't even going past 15 minutes of talking, but I looked and it was like 30 minutes. I'm just like, oh, that's awkward. I literally didn't want to go past 20 minutes, but hey, y'all got 30 minutes, so enjoy it or not. I don't really care. You know, I'm doing this for me, not you. Me. But yeah, pretty much the end of the um, podcast. I just really want to say, um, if you made it this far, thank you for watching. The whole usual like, comment, subscribe, share. Yeah, we're just going to see what happens, you know? We are big vibing. So, what happens is what happens. So, yeah. Thank you for watching.